Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I am making some last minute holiday gifts for, I think we're doing like a Dirty Santa or something or I don't know, there's, we're, we're doing some different gift swaps and I don't know who's going to end up with the present so I'm trying to make something that'll be nice for like anybody or that can be re-gifted really easily. So, we are going to be working on, oh hey, wow. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I am endlessly entertained by distorted reflections. So um, I just have an old that we actually got like, gosh, all of our Christmas ornaments we got at Goodwill about 12 years ago. Um, and I put used some yarn to hang them on the tree because that holds on a little better whenever the cat's feeling rambunctious. Um, but I'm going to be making a cover that can just slip over this. That way if the ornament, like we'll be giving away the ornament as well. Um, but that way if the ornament falls, psh, breaks, you can still salvage the cover and just put it over any ornament of a similar size. So this is a, about a two, two and a quarter inch in diameter, um, ornament. I am using just some metal gallery. Uh, it says it's shiny silver, but you can see down here it's starting to like turn yellow where it's been... Um, either touching something else in the drawer or just, uh, I'm not going to make necklace chains out of it, but I still have all of this chain. So this is also a fantastic opportunity to use some really cute little sparkly charms or ornaments, or not ornaments, but like charms or beads or anything like that. But I think I'm going to do this one a little steampunky. So I'm grabbing, I just have a few little like gears here. Are they in two different sizes? They are. I'm going to be using the larger size. I think that I got these from Michael's. But I'm not Let's see what else in here. Ooh, look at this bad boy. Oh, that's so pretty. Okay. So we got some big sparklies. Hmm. Okay. So yeah, I'm just going to be using predominantly these half inch diameter gears. And what we're going to want to start by like the first thing we're going to want to do is to get the measurement of what we want up here at the top so I'm going to be using we could do like maths and stuff but I have some scrap wire and I'm going to use that so I'm just taking my scrap wire and I want this to sit around mm, we could have it sit really snug but then it really limits like um, what ornaments it could fit on. So I think just having it sit to here. So we've got a little bit of overlap. So I'm going to put a bend with my fingernail into the wire. And then how many? About three inches. So our initial layer is going to need to be three inches long. And I'm going to be joining our chain together with, these are 20 gauge, one eighth inch inner diameter saw cut stainless steel rings from the Ring Lord. I just, I like my connections to be uh, reliable. And so I could use this same ring size in aluminum um, but I don't find it as, as like strong. And the only pliers I'm going to be using for this today are my wire snips and then my, um, bent nose and tapered flat nose. Basically anything that you're going, any pliers that you like for opening and closing jump rings. And so it looks like if we have our gears lined up with our mark here. It looks like we just need one half inch of chain. Now let's actually see if is zooming in going to be helpful like at all. Maybe, maybe not that much zoomed in. Okay. So it looks like that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven links. So I'm going to snip on the eighth link. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And 
I guess we could just count each time because that's not going to be too much. So there's one, and then we come up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's snip that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there is our three initial chains, just right there like that. And we're going to be using one of these jump rings. And whenever I open my rings, I try to open them like this. That way they maintain their round shape. And we'll hook on the chain. And then hook this onto our gear. You want to make sure that whatever gears that you're using, whatever rings that you're using, you just want to make sure that your gear can fit inside your ring. Kind of like how we have going on here, you want to be able to have that little bit of movement. And so, really this project is just a whole bunch of snipping and assembling. So now we're going to hook through the other end of our chain. And hook through another gear and then close that and then we will take another ring there will be a material list down in the video description that can help to get you shopping and those are affiliate links so anything purchased through there greatly greatly helps uh, support our channel without any additional cost to y'all so uh, but it's also, those are just what I use. Feel like I highly encourage um, to shop around and find what is m most ideal for you and your crafting space and your you know, kind of taste and style and things like that. So we're just continuing around, just making it a little chain. And then bringing that to there. And then we're going to attach the last length of chain. And we have some options here. We could join the ends together. And start working with our continuous um, loop. And I think we should go ahead and do that just to see how things fit. See how they look. Kind of test check every step of the way. Because experimentation keeps keeps crafting spicy, uh, for sure. But it's nice to know that your experiment's working. Um, so I'm going to... This is not a curb chain, so there isn't like a proper way for it to be hanging or anything. But I do like to kind of see how it wants to hang on its own. And then follow that. So that, um, you know, there's not like a bunch of twists or anything in it. Okay, so we'll go ahead and close that. And if you guys like this style of stuff, I am planning on doing a couple more videos of this style of ornament cover, um, or rather this concept of ornament cover with varying degrees of complexity. Like we'll actually be getting into the realm of chain mail um, and kind of making things like that. So here we have our little gears. Oh, and that's so cute. It's sitting kind of like triangly. I like that a lot, actually. Um, so. We can now design a little bit further. I'm going to take these really pretty, like, sparkly gears out of here. This is make a mess. Okay. And we do have these smaller gears that we could attach one, like, layer down. Because my initial thought was we would just do, like, a little swag drape. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Like that. And I, I do think that that would be pretty cute. We can make it multi-layer. That'd be okay. Okay. I really like for whenever I'm working on round projects like this to just use a little candle holder. And it does kind of roll around sometimes to where the uh, heaviest point wants to go to the bottom. But we can just stack that into our spot. Oops. <laughs> I know how to make this behave, maybe. So we'll 
just take this, put that in there. Well, that defeats the purpose entirely. Okay, well, nice and spicy. <laughs> okay, so we may decide to not on that. Though we could, let's try this. I have this selenite sphere here. Or selenite, depending on who you're talking to. Okay, you want to make sure that it is laying just nice and even. And now we did our first layer at, what was that, seven? We cut on the eighth. So let's see how that was at half an inch. So now we can try three fourths of an inch. And that looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We'll cut on the eleventh. And we'll still only need three of these. So there's one. And then we will count eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And this is the same strategy that I use whenever I'm doing like draping in a necklace or on earrings or something. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I like to put my fingers over it whenever I snip. That way these little rogue metal bits don't look like straight into my eyeballs. Um, <laughs> so, because they will. They will. When you least expect it. And I even wear glasses like 100% of the time. Um, like if I'm awake, I'm wearing my glasses because I'm blind AF. But... Uh, sometimes the metal will still find its way up an indie eye hole, so watch out. Okay, so I'm just looping this through using the same rings to attach. I'm just putting that on there. Sometimes whenever you uh, get bags of rings, don't be surprised if you get like little half rings like that. Oftentimes um, the beginning or ending of a coil whenever it's being cut. Now, I didn't coil and cut these rings, but whenever we used to coil and cut and sell our own homemade rings, um, that was something we'd run into quite a bit, was like, you know, there's a kind of odd end piece to all the coils. So it's, um, it's normal, I guess is all I'm saying. I, I've read some reviews on other people's chainmail stuff that, uh, like their chainmail bags, on like Amazon and things of people being like, oh my god, it had these half broken half pieces in there. And it's like, well, that's kind of just like a manufacturing side like side effect that just that's gonna happen. Okay, now that is not nearly as drapey as I want it to be. So we are not going to waste these ones, but I am going to use that as a reminder to myself to double check my length next time. So what I'm going to use these ones for, the three quarter of an inch lengths that we had done, um, is I'm actually going to hang them off of the next section over. So, and what I mean by that, I'll show you, is if we have that one's got a ring in it and that one's got a ring in it, I'm going to put it in this one. That way we can have a section that's like a hangy downy bit. You know technical terminology yes yeah, so there you can kind of see how it just boop hangs down like that and you could technically make like a whole web of just gears linked together with a chain like this I'm just gonna turn this hook through right there and close it Then I'm going to turn it, open this, hook through right there, hook through, ah, oh, what's happening here? Uh-oh, I did not do like I was supposed to. I kind of like that, though. Oh, man, I like that a bunch. Hmm. Okay, maybe on, maybe on another piece one day. So you can see here, I, I had them in adjoining compartments as opposed to opposing So let's find the closure. Now if you ever find yourself shopping for 
jump rings. Even if you don't weave chainmail, I recommend using chainmail supplies for your jump rings because they're just, you can't, I don't, they're a little bit more standardized than what I've been able to find like online for just like jewelry making jump rings uh, that can often have like vague listings or, you know, just something like that. But also that you get a little bit more specific material listings whenever you're shopping from chain mail shopping with chain mail suppliers i'm so sorry words are let me have a sip of coffee hope my brain boots up cheers all y'all thank you for joining me here today <laughs> but um beep boop what are we talking about uh yeah um it, even if i didn't weave chain mail i would still go to like the ring lord or chain mail joe to get my jump rings just because then i know it's not like oh alloy jump rings like how you might find on like Amazon or AliExpress or something um you can find very specifically they list the metal type the you know gauge the inner diameter um oftentimes not just in chicken nuggets but also like in millimeters and so uh it just it helps to you know really fine tune it and know what you're shopping for that and you can get some stout boys like that one's not even particularly stout. Like, that's the dinkiest that I would personally use. But, like, check out this one. Like, that is substantial. You're not going to have to worry about your clasp falling off of your necklaces or bracelets and stuff whenever you use a substantial ring like that. Okay. So now we have this sort of thing going on. Let's test fit. And actually, I'm going to say a styrofoam ball works really, really well for this because you can pin stuff and you can just use like straight pins and like draft your design first. Okay, that's a lot more what I'm going for. That level of drape. Okay, so what is this? It looks like it's an inch and a half. So we've gone from a half an inch to an inch and a half. That's all right. And it's long enough now that I feel like I can just measure and snip without counting. So I like to hold on to the chain that I'm going to be snipping and then make both of the chains be good friends and parallel to each other. And then I mark with my fingernail round about where the next snip line will be. So that's one, two, three. Okay. Ooh, something that we could do would be to just put a little gear on the tip of these. But we'll see how that fits here in a moment. Whoops. Well, that's lost forever. I'll just grab a fresh one. We'll open that up. And then hook on to our chain. And I'm going to come around and I'm going to hook through the same little section of the gear. Um, and you could use, if you don't have gears like this, just use like a big jump ring. Like, it doesn't have to be gears. Okay. And now I'm going to open this one. And I'm going to hook it onto the end. And then I'm going to hook it onto there and close. I'd gotten this selenite sphere on discount because it was pretty scuffed up, so I'm not really worried about um, marring its polish or anything like that. But um, again, just a. Uh, this is just me. You could totally get away with using a baseball or. A styrofoam ball or um, like literally anything you guys the last thing I ever want is for like if I could wish a wish for you is that to not let not having the exactly same tools and materials stop you from experimenting and having fun and getting crafty because oftentimes being faced with not having, you know, the tools and materials necessarily 
portrayed in a video can really make you get creative with it and you'll, you'll stumble across all sorts of different inventive things that maybe you might not have been thinking of. Okay, so just continuing around. Attaching the chains with the jump rings to the gears. And technically, this right here could be all that we do. Like if you like just a little bit of a chain drape. So we'll take that, put it over the top of our ornament, pull the yarn thing through so it's not. Untangle the chain from where we pulled the yarn thing through. Oh my gosh. What is even happening? <laughs> there we go. Sometimes you just gotta poke it a bit. Oh my god, that's so cute. <laughs> okay, so we are definitely going to be... Why is this so off-center? Just the thing coming out of the top. I just realized how off-center that is. Oh well. Um, but that is how that's coming along. I'm going to do definitely more drapies than this, though. But you could totally stop here. So we'll just pull that off. And lay our gears back onto our work surface. So our last drape was at, what was that, an inch and a half? And so now we can test our next drape at That looks pretty good. I'm going to shorten it just a bit to account for the addition of the rings that we use to attach. And it's roughly, uh, let's go ahead and call it three inches. And now I'm just going to hold, run my fingers along the chain until we get right there. Snip. Come to our new cut location. And oftentimes, whenever I'm doing stuff like this, if I've worked out the design, like if it's for a necklace and I want to make like five of them, I'll go ahead and cut the chain for five necklaces or five ornaments. Um, just to make sure that everything... I mean, if I'm already snipping, how many was that? Okay, so that's all we need. But yeah, it's just as easy to cut ten as it is to cut... or cut nine of them as it is to cut three. Okay, I am going to need more chainmail, more uh, jump rings, so. So if you guys follow along with this, I would really love to see what you've made. So be sure to t uh, tag me on Instagram. You can do hashtag craft along with Vaughn, um, or you can share it to my wall on Facebook. Um, and that'd be really cool. That way I can see what y'all been up to. So from here, I'm actually going to be hooking through the, um, this ring, the stainless steel ring we had added to the gear initially, just because I don't want to bog the gear down too much. So there's one. And then I'm going to hook through the other end. And then just hooking through that ring. And closing. And now we'll rotate around. Open that up. Hook on. Through. There we go. Oops. Well, the whole thing just slid off, didn't it? That's all right. So the little chains that hang off the ends of the gears help me to know um, 
when things are twisted up because it's like, okay, that's supposed to be going in the other direction. There we go. Getting things straightened back out. And I am doing the crafting in real time with you guys, just because I like that. You can always speed up the video. Okay. Now also, instead of using chain, you could do uh, strung beads, like beads strung up on thread. Let me know if you'd like to see a video like that, doing some beadwork. I've been really, really hankering to get into some beadwork lately, but it's so time consuming. I say as I spend like <laughs> a long time <laughs> working on this piece. Yeah, that's all right. But you could add little wire wrapped uh, links in between, like, or in the segments of chain. Just all sorts of different ways to make this unique and specific to your taste and your style. Okay. So there's that. I am going to go ahead. I think I'd like to do maybe one in between. Like, I feel like that was a a bit of a jump between the inch and a half and the three inch like maybe I should have done like a two and a quarter but I'm just taking our smaller gears and I'm gonna come around hook through that last link on the chain turn in it and this is not gonna lie, this is just a very, very small version of how we make our belly dance outfits and a lot of like the uh, very chain drapey costumes and different things that we've done in the past. Um, same concept, just I usually use a more robust chain <laughs> and just make it bigger. That's actually how we first started making our uh, our way into making costumes from making jewelry. Is I just treated it like um, like an arm guard for your forearm, like a van brace or a bracer. It's just a really big fancy bracelet, <laughs> so it made it made the whole thing a, a whole lot more approachable. Okay, so now I'm going to try threading this back on to our ornament just to test and see, because I mean different size sphere is going to be looking a little bit different. I really like that. Okay. And I think, oh, and it's not even in frame. I'm sorry, guys. I think, I think I'm happy with it. You can kind of poke it a bit and get everything to lay correctly, but I really like that. Okay, let's actually zoom out so you can see what in the heck. <laughs> so that is our little ornament. Let's go put it on the tree. So this is how our little ornament cover has come out. Very, very basic, very beginner friendly. Honestly, I think it would look super cool with like five chains in there on the sides. Um, but you could also join the chains on the tip. But if you're accident prone, like our household is, um, that makes it more difficult, especially if it's a gift to someone, for if the ornament breaks, for them to just put the cover onto another uh to put the cover onto another ornament so i do hope that this was helpful to you guys though let me know what you think down in the comments below um i can't wait to see what y'all make with this and i will see y'all next time so oh yeah um we do booty boxes and craft along club and all sorts of stuff links for everything are down in the video description but thank you guys so so much like if it just for being here if you want to go above and beyond doing everything that you're already doing which is amazing um you know please consider checking out that stuff but there's no pressure or anything like that we're just glad you're here and keeping it crafty so until next time you guys happy crafting bye <laughs> okay so i i lied it's not over i'm back hey guys <laughs>
<laughs> so I was looking at it on the train. I'm like, yeah, it's okay. But like, I mean, we could do more, <laughs> more shiny and danglies. And then like Von Bo Baggins was like, after all, why not? Why shouldn't I? Um, and so I'm adding more to it. Um, okay. So I just wanted to show you, I've already done the other sides. I went ahead and trimmed some more chain to the two and a quarter inch length. Um, typically, uh, you know, just going up whatever increment you're increasing by, just be consistent by it, uh, consistent with it. So, like, if you're making, you know, one inch increments or three quarters inch increments, just keep that incrementally going up, and your chain drapes will look nice and even and lovely. Now I have some more of these small gears that I'm just hooking our ring through and I'm going to zoom in super far and here on our chain it's super handy that it's seven links because we can go one, two, three, four and on this fourth link we can come in and whoop, maybe, nope, wait I want to go through, oh there we go, just through that link. And then closing our jump ring. So there is that. And now I'm going to zoom out just a hair. Because I'm not going to be adding more jump rings, I'm going to be adding more chain to these two stainless steel jump rings. So it definitely helps to already have the chain cut. Um, man, would it kill me to use some tape or something? Where is it at? Well, do I even have any tape? Vaughn, how do you not have tape? Oh my gosh. Well, taping it down would be really helpful, but bear with me. I mean, you've already stuck it out this far, so thank you guys. Um, I'm just gonna, oops. Okay, so what's happening here is the chain is magnetic, which drives me a little bananas, but we will prevail. We'll figure it out. Actually, what's driving me crazy is my pliers are magnetic and it's attracting the chain to it. So it is what it is though. I'm trying really hard to do this without it sliding off so that I don't have to take up the time to realign it. So I've just opened that ring and I'm just going to hook the new chain onto it and then give it a close and then come through and there is our chain hanging. It's always easier for me to do the right side, the right handed ring than the left handed, but to each their own. can also be really tricky to try to find the closure on these saw cut jump rings sometimes. There we go. And hooking that chain on. And then closing. There we are. Very cool. So having the little gears inside took up that empty space. And now we're here. And we can just kind of lift and touch. That's much, this is much more uh, what I had envisioned. And sometimes it just takes that little bit extra. So we're just going to slide up right here. Transition it onto the ornament. And this is something, it doesn't have to be a Christmas ornament, y'all. You could do this onto like a blown glass um, bobble that you have like hanging out in your garden or something like a candle holder uh you can make something very similar to this but instead of it sitting on an ornament you could have it sitting on like a wine bottle or something like that um so yeah let's go try putting this on the tree round two now that is pretty looks a lot more substantial nice like it looks completed i like that so all the same stuff I said before, if you're interested in supporting the channel and you like our free tutorials and want to get like behind the scenes and booty boxes and things like that, please check out our Happy Crafter Club or find us on social media or just subscribe and keep it crafty and I will see y'all next time. So for realsies this time, happy crafting. Mwah.
Bye. <laughs>